Peace be with you. Welcome to The Dean Show. We have an exciting show. We have a lot to talk about, a lot of ground to cover today. You heard about the Chapel Hill shooting. Also recently, you just the other day, you had the Muslim who was driving his kids from school and a man just came out point blank and killed him. You hearing about that on the news? Well, that's something that's happening. You have the hijabi sister also who was actually told, imagine if Jesus' mother, Mary, who wears the hijab, if she went to a court now and she was told, take that thing off of your head. And that's what she was told now. Now, we're also going to be talking about, you know, 24-hour coverage, ISIS. But none of these things really that we had mentioned that are these, these tragedies, you don't get much media coverage. We're going to be talking about all of this and more with my next guest here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. 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 Peace you with you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Sheikh? Assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Great to have you back on the Dean Show. Yes, uh, Eddie, how you doing? How you uh, been? Thank God. Alhamdulillah. Everything's good. It's always a pleasure to see you. You're looking good, mashallah. Mashallah. Uh, uh, life, rough and tough. And, you know, we're going through some of the challenges, especially nowadays. You have a lot of misinformation out there about Islam. Mm -hmm. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to, I had mentioned some of the tragic events that had happened against innocent civilians. These are, these are, we consider, you know, terrorist attacks. The media is covering it, you know, very um, uh, meniscusly. They're, they're really not giving it the due proper attention. But it seems like there's this group out there, uh, was it uh, ISIL, ISIS, and it seems like 24-7, you know, the, the American public is being, the world is being brainwashed like these people represent Islam. Now I'm going to share a quote with you from a Kareem Abdul Jabbar, He's a six-time NBA champion. Now, what he did was he gave a beautiful analogy. He said, when the KK Ku Klux Klan was burning crosses in black families' yards, prominent Christians aren't required to explain how these aren't really Christian acts. Most people already realize that the KKK doesn't represent Christian teachings. You get the example he's making? Exactly. That's, I think that sums it up, you know, that makes it simple. And this is the way it is with us now. Um, that, you know, um, an organization was created. Allah knows best how it was created. And it is now utilized uh, to simply uh, spread um, misinformation about our religion. And the capitalization is minimizing or diminishing our uh, religious uh, rights or our rights. I. I'm not uh, aware of you heard of, uh, I guess in your intro you mentioned, uh, you referred to Maryam alayhi salam being asked to take her hijab in a the, Jesus, the, the mother of Jesus, yes. who we love and revere. Uh, absolutely, and, and this happened actually in Canada. I'm, I, I wasn't sure if you were referring to that event in yes, Canada. Yes, I'm actually, that's actually now. Yeah, a sister, imagine a sister in a courtroom in, in, in Canada was asked by a female judge, a female judge, I think it's a province called Quebec uh, in, in Canada, uh, to remove her hijab. And she uh, actually refused to reside on the case until she uh, goes and, and, and investigates um, the fact w whether she's entitled to request the removal of the hijab or not. Um, that sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward her, she, she made a beautiful statement when she said, listen, when I applied for my immigration to the United St uh, to the Canada, I was wearing my hijab. When I received my citizenship, I was uh, uh, wearing the hijab. And now I'm just, you know, pursuing one of my rights. So again, we go back to the issue is uh, an organization was created. I don't know who did it, how it was done. And it is now utilized, um, uh, you know, like you, you mentioned, 24-7 almost coverage uh, in, in the news uh, to simply take away uh, our rights or brainstorm Americans again 
and, and, and spread Islamophobia and, and uh, we are out there have to do something about it. And we can just wait until it comes to us. That, that's, um, that's what the Dean Show is all about, educating, sharing, because we care. Mm -hmm. We want to get the facts out. Now, just to bring this point home, I want to make a comparison because, again, we're not going to get into, you know, there's a lot of uh, theories. If, you know, these, uh, we're not going to talk about if these are false flag operations. We're not going to talk about if, you know, this is, this is a, a setup or whatever the case. Let's assume that this, this you know, uh, whatever they're saying, that this group is really um, out there and whatnot. Now, the CIA and other organizations who have tried to sum up how many actually cons um, consist in this group, and they've come up numbers between 20 to 31,000. Okay, so there were some interesting statistics. Now, if you have 1.6 billion Muslims, mm -hmm. those who submit to the will of the Creator, okay, thy will be done, as in the Lord's Prayer. That's Islam, isn't right. it? That's so true. now that equals 1.6 billion to 1.7 billion human beings. One out of every four human beings is a Muslim. So if you take the higher number, 31,000 that are in this, this small group, that would equal 0.0019%. <laughs> That's the funny part. Right? Now yeah. let's take, let's, well, I'm not done there. This, this is interesting. Now the KKK, who in the 1920s, they were at their peak. So at that time, there were 5 million of them in this mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. Okay? And at that time, in the 1920s, you had about 106 uh, million uh, people in, in the United States. That equals... 4.7 percent. Yeah, 4.7 percent yeah. yeah. of of uh, people in that country were a part of the KKK, and they were uh, screaming out, "Jesus saves!" Mm -hmm. They were wearing crosses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But now, did all of Christians have to come out and apologize for this group? What, no. are your, what, what are your What's your take on this? I think the blind, the deaf, would see that there is inequality in addressing issues once it comes to Muslims vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, non-Muslims. There is no question about it. And I think it's so naive to, for us to still assume uh, that justice is going to take place uh, because all these are simply orchestrated uh, by hidden forces. Allah knows them so. Um, I think what we need to worry about, Eddie, is what can we do? Um, like I said, we have to be proactive. We have to engage with the uh, community in, in North America in general. Uh, we have to increase our um, you know, efforts to uh, provide awareness, uh, to correct mis misconceptions. Uh, we have to come out of the shell. Um, and, and this is simply the work of Dawah. Um, you know, uh, worrying too much uh, about what is being done and, 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 and crying over the, uh, uh, the uh, injustice of, of, of handling uh, our cases vis-a-vis uh, -vis their, their, their cases is not going to help us at all. But what we need to do and focus on on what will help us and we need to engage in da'wah. And da'wah simply is letting people know who we are. For the past 20, 30, 40 years, when really Islam became um, you know, noticed uh, in North America, until this very day, um, very few efforts are placed uh, in media. Uh, we can tell that media is brainstorming, is directing the uh, the, the general public in the United States. We need to start thinking about media outlets where we can actually, uh, uh, you know, get our message out to, to the people uh, in that scale, um, beside the efforts in, in, in you know, of da'wah uh, and so-called interfaith. So we got to share. Absolutely. We got to get out there and yes, share and yes. really show yes. this beautiful way of life yes. for what yes. really what it is, not what the media is trying to portray. Right. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Islamic Terrorism Misconception, Muslims are terrorists This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody it is quickly regarded as terrorism?
Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However, all over the world people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include, Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits, for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, If they seek peace, then you seek peace. Which means, do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show. Again, I'm going to make a comparison, a contrast. Now, the KKK obviously doesn't represent mainstream Christianity, right? Uh, and obviously, if, if you had the media constantly focusing on groups like that, most people would get brainwashed into believing that. And that's what right. they're doing with Islam and Muslims. And any sincere people can pro most likely see through that. What about this other group? There's another group out there. I'm going to go ahead, and this is another Christian group. And I'm going to, because seeing is believing. So let mm. me show this video, and then we'll get your thoughts on this. Santísima muerte. Santísima muerte. Not well. She's got a chance of of becoming and growing, growing more, but I don't think she will ever uh, get out of, from the pit. So. The <laughs> of death? You may not have heard of her, but recently Santa Muerte began making international headlines amid reports of ritual human sacrifice just south of the U.S. border in Mexico. And as 8 News investigative reporter A.J. Legault uncovers, the worship of death is being practiced right here in the metro area. This skeletal maiden with the empty eyes is a saint for sinners, and her popularity is exploding. She has millions of followers, devotees, both in the U.S. and in Mexico. And many of those devotees are among the most violent criminals in the world. She is the premier narco saint. So what we just saw was Santa uh, Muerta. She's the saint of death. And Christians actually worship her. And, not, and this, she's gaining popularity in, into the millions. And many of the, the drug cartel who are decapitating you know, who are uh, doing some of the most notorious terrorist acts. Now, they actually find justification in doing that because they fall back on St. Death, mm -hmm. who they link back to Christianity. And then you also have some of these leaders, as you see in many different articles, uh, some of these cartel leaders who are actually Christian, and they will go ahead, one of them, uh, particularly um, Nazaro Manero, he actually wrote a 104-page booklet talking about Christian life and Christian living, mm -hmm. right? So now my point is, Sheikh, and you tell me what you think. Now, imagine if the media was highlighting this part, this group, mm -hmm. as if they represented Christianity, as they do with this other group saying that they represent Islam, the ISIL. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? They will still misinform the non-Muslims because we as Muslims know exactly what the teachings of Jesus were. And they are almost, if not 100%, uh, identical to our teachings. Uh, Tawheed, monotheism, the worship of one God, and simply uh, morality is um, uh, observed. Uh, so they will not misinform Muslims. Um, they will definitely affect uh, the minds, the brains, the hearts, the souls of Christians. Because I have to tell you something that uh, the average layman in, in the United States or in, in Canada, they are not even educated about their own religion. And, but yeah, I agree. If this message is uh, simply uh, focused uh, upon like ISIS, uh, the way that they are handling ISIS, you would think that every Christian would believe that. And this is, again, misinformation. Having prominent scholars come out, I mean, these are the top scholars that the average Muslim look up to, and they've condemned 
these acts of, of, of um, torture that have been done, mm -hmm. the beheading of aid workers, you know, the burning, I mean, uh, of the Jordanian pilot. Let me put it this way, to be fair to everybody. If ISIS, the way that the media portrays them, this is certainly the ideology of a sect in Islam called the breakaways, al khawarij If, again, so you don't misquote me, if, because quite frankly, I mistrust the media. I don't believe the media. And every Muslim and non-Muslim got to be very careful uh, with the message they hear on especially these mainstream uh, media outlets. Uh, they are orchestrated, they, 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 they come out in a very uh, organized manner. Listen, media, Eddie, is the new sorcery. You know, we read the story of the boy of the, and the king and, and, and the sunnah. Uh, we read the story of the Pharaoh and Moses. They, these rulers or these uh, governments at that time, they actually relied on uh, uh, actual uh, uh, sorcerers, people who actually come and affect the uh, eyes, the, the, yeah. the way that you see, the, the, the deception. Media right now is sorcery. Sorcery is media. So you got to be careful what you watch and what message you're, you're hearing. And, uh, you know, if you have Iman, inshallah, Allah will let you see the truth. To back up what you're saying, actually, they, they have organizations who will measure the amount of truth, may have truths, and li I mean, deliberate lies mm -hmm. that these media, most of them, that they put out. Mm -hmm. And actually, the uh, biggest thing was when the um, media was saying that there were these no-go zones mm -hmm. in France and other places. Yes, uh, and these was a blatant lie. Birmingham is 100% uh, yeah. or 90% Muslims. These are I, lies. I've been to Birmingham. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. you still see Christians there. But it's clear, it, it's there. clear, killing aid workers, killing mm -hmm. civilians, all of these things, burning. This, is, this has nothing Ab to do with absolutely, Islam. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, you know I, uh, that, that uh, Jordanian uh, pilot, um, I myself, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we're heads of communities. I, you know, you have to come up with something to explain to the people what's going on. Uh, because, and this is really should be the duty of imams and, and religious heads in, in their own level communities. Uh, simply, there are three hadith in, in Sunan Abi Dawood mm -hmm. uh, where the Prophet وسلم, made it crystal clear that the only one who is entitled to punish using fire is the Lord of the fire. And actually, um, during the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, certain individuals actually claimed that he's God. And he simply uh, burned them. Um, and when Ibn Abbas, radiallahu an, whom I told him, uh, you shouldn't have done that, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, regretted the fact and, and you know, he asked, that's his humility and, and humbleness. Uh, in a way, we, uh, that is totally, um, you know, uh, something that we should not, even um, uh, a recent scholar, uh, Bin Baz, rahimahullah, he said even, uh, uh, you know, uh, capital punishment using uh, ele electricity could be actually uh, a branch of fire, so we should not even do it. So that would be would against be Islam? Against Islam as well. So Islam is crystal clear on these issues. Uh, these practices and, and these behaviors are not condoned by Islam at all. I understand there is a little view out there if, if this is qasas, in a way, if the person have burned, uh, you know, the, uh, then he's to be burned. There is a, a, but this is not the view of the majority of the jurists uh, on the subject. Uh, in a way, Eddie, we need to pay attention here to, to the challenge that we're facing as Muslims. Um, there is somehow a wave of Islamophobia very similar to the one that we experienced right after 9-11. In order to execute uh, some maybe war here and there, that's what I'm reading myself. There is a setup, and again, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't believe so much in that, uh, you know, conspiracy theory, but uh, I experienced 9-11, and I'm sure you did, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers did. Uh, that uh, you know, Islamophobia was used to justify war here and there, and, 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 and they did execute it. It looks like something similar is about to happen. 
Now, we as Muslims living in the United States and Canada are on the front line. And again, I go back to the main point. Let's be proactive. Let's go out there and reach out and let people know who we are. Because it's coming to us. We got to go and bring it to them. But in a peaceful, nice, da'wah way. That's right. That's what Islam is propagating. Yes. Peace and love. Yes. Ling, loving for humanity, what you right. love for yourself. Right. And we want the best for all of man, uh, mankind. So we're going to take a break and we'll come back. You mentioned 9-11. Obviously, Islam has nothing to do with any of these terrorist acts. But we have some family members. I think many people don't know about this. That uh, we're going to take a clip here and they can watch it while we take a break. And architects and engineers who uh, actually are educating people on this event. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. And what caught my eye is more than 1,300 architects and engineers examine the evidence about Building 7's collapse and disagree with the official report issued by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. I certainly am much more open-minded about it than I was, and it is because of the involvement of the 9-11 families and all these engineers and architects. You are about to hear from architect of 23 years, Richard Gage, AIA, member of the American Institute of Architects and founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Now there are more than 1,500 architects and engineers who say that it could not have been brought down by office fires. They are backed by 9-11 family members who are calling for an independent, unbiased investigation. I'm a family member trying to find out the answers to the murder of 3,000 plus people. The bottom line is that it needs to be investigated properly. Please look at architects and engineers, people all around the world, scientists all around the world are questioning this. And there's some deep, deep explaining to do. It took some kind of consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. As an engineer, I have three degrees in engineering. I signed that petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth some time ago because the American people absolutely need the truth of 9-11 look at the evidence. In fact, I'll say this very categorically. Any reasonable person who looks at the evidence that's been brought forward has got to come away with the feeling that something has to be done, a real investigation has to be put forward. We will never heal. This country will never, ever, ever forget that day. We have to demand a new investigation. I want justice here. Back here on The Dean Show. Now, I mentioned we also we were going to talk about, surely it's, it's so sad when any innocent human being dies. Mm -hmm. And you see that as soon as a um, submitter to God, a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim, Abraham, Moses, they all did God's will. That's what a Muslim is. White, black, Chinese, Italian, German. You know, so many. Islam is the fastest growing way of life in the world. Uh, because it just makes sense. You know, it doesn't call to terrorism. It calls a human being to have peace with their creator, peace with themselves, and peace with society and humanity. And when you see these Muslims in Chapel Hill who died, this um, also a brother who just got killed um, the other day, uh, and then the media, they don't label this a terrorist ass, a hate crime. It's parking ticket, road rage. What do you think about this? It's, again, the inequality uh, against as Muslims. Um, you know, recently we, we purchased uh, as an organization in Denver, uh, non-profit, um, a building that we want to make as a community center. Uh, Dar al Tawheed, the organization that I'm heading. I'm just giving you an example in, in Denver, Colo in, in Colorado. And as soon as we actually had the property under contract, uh, the homeowner association started actually approaching us and asking us all type of questions. What are you going to do this for? What, what is this for? And what is this for? And what is this for? You know, we responded with one simple question. If we were to happen to be a Christian organization, would you have asked these questions? Uh, you take this, you know, look at the media coverage of the three uh, students. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on their soul Amen. and grant their parents and family members uh, steadfastness. Uh, look at the media coverage. 
and, and has it been for you know, uh, us complaining about it, they probably would have received zero coverage. Um, this is where I'm stressing the importance of having our own media outlets uh, in, the, uh, in North America. Uh, and, you know, and, and I'm glad the Dean Show does uh, contribute to this greatly. Sure. Uh, but we need something that is 24-7 like they do. And, and this is the solution. We got to, uh, you know, try to solve our own issues. But at the same time, uh, Eddie, I want the viewers to also realize that this life for believers is a testing place, not a resting place. Mm -hmm. Allah told us this, that yes. listen, if you will uh, practice your deen, if you will stick to monotheism and you, you strive to live your lives according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be tested. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked, who will be tested most by Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the prophets, the messengers, then the righteous. Then those who are closest to them once it comes to quality of, uh, of, of religion. And look at this, look at the statement that he made. And every believer will be tested in accordance with the quality of his deen. Uh, if, if, his, if the quality of his iman, faith is high, then his test will be elevated. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا You shall be tested with respect to your wealth and your own selves. And you shall hear from those who associate and worship other deities with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot of harmful things. Mm -hmm. Now what should we do? Huh? What should we do? Patience, perseverance. And that should be our attitude when we uh, go through these calamities, uh, go through these uh, tests, go through these hardships and, and, and trial. This is the attitude. This is where Iman is faith, believing, uh, is an asset in the life of a believer because it helped them overcome these injustices, uh, uh, these uh, obvious inequality uh, uh, in the society uh, in dealing with our issues. But this, I want to stress this, I want to stress upon this, Eddie, this does not entitle us to react in a violent way or to respond in a mean way. No, we should be patient, we should be forbearing in dealing with these um, individuals because this was the manner and the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shay, before we leave, we're out of time. To the family members, we also forgot to mention, um, and these incidents are, are on the rise, you also had a, another brother, I believe in Canada, the man actually came and shot him through the peephole, mm -hmm. killed him, mm -hmm. right? It's another hate crime. Now for the parents who've lost these loved ones, these were, these were individuals who were out there making humanity a better place. Mm -hmm. They were doing good, uh, dedicating like the dentists, de dedicating their time and their services for charity and for organizations of helping humanity. Now their parents are left without their children. Um, I want to tell you something, Eddie, and, and those who listen and watch my, my uh, khutbas and, and talks, I have said this in reaction to this. I was actually happened to be in Edmonton, uh, Alberta, Canada, uh, Masjid Rashid there uh, giving a khutbah. And I said, if you actually look into uh, the Quran and the Sunnah to figure out the greatest calamity that a person may be inflicted with, it's actually losing uh, your child. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is a, a line there that the scholars say, uh, the greater the, re the calamity, the greater the reward. Look when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes or seizes or ordains the death of a loved one, of your child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angels to the parents. And Allah knows, we believe that Allah knows everything. And then the angels will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will ask them, what is my servant is saying? They will say, Ya Rabb, oh Allah, they are saying, they are saying, or he is saying, or she is saying, Alhamdulillah. You know what Allah would say? 
ابن لعبدي بيتا في الجنة وسموه بيت الحمد Build for my servant a house in Jannah and call it the house of praise, the house of Alhamd. Mm-hmm. Why? Because of the calamity. Uh, you know, uh, it's so amazing. Uh, one of the scholars of Hadith, I want to share this with you, his name is Sufyan al-Thawri. He's an he's expert of Hadith. Look at this now. The amount of text that he read in the Sunnah regarding the reward that a person receives if he loses his child himself wished that his yani, he thought that the idea occurred to him that his son would die and he will get that reward so his son was uh, i mean the, the thought occurred he thought about it that the son his son his name is abdullah was walking in front of him and he actually looked at him said, he was reading that text he said my son you, you die and i get your reward i get that reward if, if say a calamity happened, got hit by or yeah, something, if yeah. he got sick or anything yeah i mean he, did, ha- he did not make dua the yeah. thought occurred to him gives relief to the parents now yes. knowing that god almighty is the most yes. just he's yes. going to reward yes. you so in, in any rate uh, i want to say that you know uh, patience uh, and your reward will be with allah subhanahu uh, wa tell, ta'ala tell them uh, I, I, you know, I, I want to tell this to, to the parents of, of the three students or any brother or sister who lost love once. I want to share with you a hadith in Sunan al-Imam al-Nasai. Um, the hadith is authentic. Uh, uh, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sit with the Prophet and he used to bring with him his little son, his little child. And you know, a father and, and, and a son relationship is, is very touchy. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam noticed this. So he asked the companion this question, Atuhibbuh, do you love your child? You know what the companion said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, Ahabbaka Allahu kama uhibbuh. May Allah love you as much as I love my son. Subhanallah, days later, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not see his son, uh, did not see this companion. So he sent for him. So the messenger came back to the Prophet ﷺ telling him, Ya Rasulullah, mata waladu. His son passed away. That is why he's going through the, uh, you know, the, uh, the period of, of, of grief. So when the Rasul ﷺ asked for him to come, he asked him this question. Wouldn't you like any time that you want to enter from any of the gates of Jannah into Jannah? Your son is ahead of you to take your hand in, wouldn't you? Are you contented that your son will take your hand into any of the gate, eight gates of Jannah? He said, Radit Ya Rasulullah. Fa, patience, perseverance. Um, you know, that's why we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Lillahi ma akhada wa lillahi ma a'ta wa kullu shayin indahu bi ajal musamma. To Allah belongs what he has ordained to take back. And uh, we have to be patient. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather you all in Jannah uh, with your uh, loved one, Ya Rabbi. Uh, thank you, Shaykh Ami. We started with peace, we end with peace. Thank you khair. so much. And we've learned some very great things here on the Dean Show today about sharing because we, we, we sincerely care about humanity and we want the best for all of mankind. We also learned from the beginning, look, there is a Europol statistic poll that now, less than 2% of terrorist attacks have been committed by Muslims in Europe and the U.S. And we compared the KKK, Christian organization, and some of these drug cartel organizations who don't represent Christianity. And we know that as Muslims. But now you who, who's tuning in and you sincerely want to know about Islam, maybe you're a politician, now you want to get your facts straight. And now you're getting it straight here on the Dean Show that these barbaric acts don't represent Islam. It doesn't rep- represent the Muslims. And what Islam is about is something that is fascinating because more people are coming to Islam than any other religion. It's the fastest growing way of life because it, it just makes sense. Worship the creator, not the creation. Do good deeds. Make a positive effect on society. Yes. Continue to watch our shows to learn more. We send our, our condolences to all those innocent people who have lost their, their loved ones. Be patient. And remember the house of praise that's built as the sheikh had eloquently given us that hadith of the person who is patient with the test of Allah and Allah building a house of praise for that person who lost that loved one. Continue to watch us here on the Dean Show every week. Subscribe 
if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Please subscribe to The D Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The D Show by making a donation in the link below.